Seeing the spectacular northern lights is an experience that's on the bucket list of many people. Increasingly, cruise lines are seeking to lure in passengers with itineraries exclusively designed to take them to locations known for having higher chances of seeing the lights. And if this is something you've been considering, here are our six things we think you should know before you book. Sailing into the North Sea, Norwegian Sea or Arctic Ocean during autumn and winter months does mean an increased risk of sailing in heavy seas and winter storms, and this can impact your cruise in a number of ways. The ship's movement in heavy seas increases the risk that you'll feel seasick. And whilst cruise lines carry stocks of seasickness pills, these can be an additional cost and can also take up to an hour to work, so it's a good idea to buy your own supply if you're worried that you may get sick. The ship's movement can also lead to an increased risk of falls and injury, even falling out of bed in very heavy seas, as happened to me on our trip. Very rough seas can also mean that ship's facilities such as swimming pools, spas and gymnasiums can all be closed during these periods. And this is to avoid injuries of course, which is understandable. Generally though, most modern cruise ships are equipped with stabilisers which greatly lessen the movement in rough seas. However, it was our experience that even with such safety features, the cruise line still opted to restrict movements and activities during the heaviest seas. Our next point is that these itineraries take you north of the Arctic Circle where there are few cruise ports available and an increasing number of cruise lines looking to use them. This can mean itineraries which have few port days and significantly more sea days than is normal. This really is an important consideration and it really does pay to select a ship that has plenty to offer you as you'll spend significantly more time on it. Do your research on the ship and ensure you're going to get an onboard experience that gives you what you want and has the facilities and activities that will entertain you whilst at sea. Our next point to raise is daylight hours and as you'll be heading into the Arctic typically between the months of October and March, well that will mean that daylight hours are short ranging between 4 to 8 hours in the ports that you'll visit. And this does impact what you can do in the ports themselves in terms of excursions, trips away from the port itself and your time around the town. If you're lucky you'll be able to choose a nighttime activity such as a Northern Lights excursion or boat trip, otherwise you'll generally want to be back in the main town areas before darkness falls. This does however open up opportunities to experience the nightlife in these remote destinations, the bars, restaurants and cafes and these experiences can be culturally enriching and a whole heap of fun. Ensure you do check with your cruise provider that you will get time in the evenings at the ports that you visit. Our experience saw us sail away far too early at some ports and we really felt we did miss out, as where we were able to stay late we had the best of times. And one further drawback is that you also lose much of the scenic cruising element as you cruise through the fjords. In daylight these are some of the most breathtaking sights you can see on a cruise, but on these northern lights itineraries we found there were very few opportunities to admire this magnificent scenery from the ship itself. And our next point to discuss is excursions, and despite being in the Arctic, there are plenty of options in the ports. It was possible to book most excursions directly at the quayside of the ports that we visited. There are also many options available through websites like Viator or Get Your Guide, and of course you can book directly with the cruise line who run their own excursion lists. However, it's important to recognise the factors that influence whether your excursion actually goes ahead or impacts actually what you experience, and the main factor is the weather. For snowbound activities like dog sledding or ski mobile trips, well you need some snow. And for these reasons, these options are not usually available until November, and they can also be impacted or even cancelled in the event of severe storms or really bad weather. Or even a lack of snow, which was a problem on our trip. Severe weather can also impact boat trips and bus trips out to see the surrounding areas or northern lights. Or gondola rides and train journeys, again weather can mean that you lose visibility as you climb high into the mountains. High winds can also cause gondolas to temporarily close. The upshot of all of this is that excursion experiences are very susceptible to the weather, and for those reasons it can be helpful to leave booking until closer to your trip when you can see the weather forecast. Fear of missing out on cruise line book trips is a factor, but we found we were able to book boat trips, train rides and gondola rides simply by turning up or booking online shortly before via the Viator or Get Your Guide sites. So, seeing the Northern Lights is the reason why most people book this trip. However, travel agents are not so keen to tell you that the seeing the lights is by no means guaranteed. And although we were lucky on this last trip, we have been unlucky on two previous trips to see the lights. And to see the lights, you'll need four factors to all come together at the same time. First, you need significant solar activity and there are websites and apps that help forecast this. This is the main factor 
as the lights are caused by solar radiation impacting particles high in the Earth's atmosphere. Next, you'll need clear skies, and if there's cloud cover, you won't see any lights. You also need darkness. Light pollution from towns, vehicles, or even the moon can reduce the likelihood of you seeing the lights, especially with the naked eye, which is many people's expectations. You'll also need to be in the right place at the right time, and this is a feature that catches many people out. Whether the lights come out for you really is a matter of chance, and they are by no means visible in all areas at the same time, and they may also only be visible for a matter of minutes, simply fading away with darkness returning. So, booking Northern Lights excursions by no means guarantees you sight of the lights, and on our trip, coach excursions to see the lights in both Tromso and Narvik were unsuccessful. However, the lights did become visible on four occasions from on board the ship itself, and provided some spectacular displays. However, as we've said earlier, this was our third trip specifically to see the lights, and I think that does illustrate the point that seeing the lights really is a matter of luck. And our last point is that if you're lucky enough for the lights to come out on your trip, getting that perfect photo can prove elusive for many travellers. We saw so many people struggling with their cameras and mobile phones, and they often complained afterwards that they didn't get the photos that they wanted. But you don't need a posh camera or a top-end phone to get the photos you want, and most mobile phones are able to take those amazing images that you see in the brochures. So before you travel, we'd recommend that you learn how to operate your phone and camera and ensure that you can at the very minimum do the following tasks. Ensure you can turn off the flash. This may sound obvious, but we saw so many people flashing away at the sky and this of course ruins images for others as well as themselves. Then ensure you can select night mode or allow a long exposure shutter speed of at least 3 seconds or maybe up to 9 or 12 seconds if the solar activity is low. This is a key point. Your camera can see the lights even if you can't see them with your naked eyes. Being able to use the camera with an exposure time of at least 3 seconds can allow your camera to show you the lights that are there even though you can't see them, and these pictures can still be spectacular. Also ensure you know how to lock focus and focal point of your camera on the sky itself, and this can ensure your camera remains focused on the sky even if you are in the camera shot. Lastly, a good tripod helps to capture a stable image and is a good investment for this trip. And there are plenty of YouTube videos showing you how to access these features on iPhones and various models of Android phones. So our last tip is to learn and practice these techniques with your camera before you travel. You may only get a few minutes when the lights are out and being prepared can help ensure you get that perfect photo. So was it worth it? Well, absolutely. And the feeling of seeing the lights dance across the sky is truly magical and thought provoking. It's a real celestial treat and it was definitely worth all our efforts to finally see them. Supporting our channel helps us make more content like this and the easiest way to do that is to hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks very much.